I think indie games about playing the dutiful AI assistant to a plucky scientist are slowly becoming their own mini-genre, and honestly, I'm here for it. The latest game to fall into this highly specific mold is In Other Waters, which sees you helping a xenobiologist discover and catalog alien life on a distant ocean world. Go diving, find some samples, track down one of the scientist's colleagues, then go back home and start theorizing over how this alien ecosystem functions. It's a pretty simple core loop, but it's all wrapped up in some striking visuals and a very specific sci-fi flavor that I can't wait to gush about, so let's get to it. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm gonna tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today, we're discovering new life in In Other Waters. Other Waters reminds me of a very specific moment in science fiction, a period of time when we were obsessed with Mars and we dreamed about the idea of societies of silicon-based life forms and life brimming just beneath the surface of the Red Planet. Those stories were rooted in the language of hard science fiction, but served visions that far outreached the grasp of what the science they leaned on knew. They were told at a perfect moment in time when the science suggested it might be possible, but had yet to definitively prove it wasn't. Every one of these dreams about Mars were proven to be nothing more than that, but in many cases, they were meticulously detailed, rigorously crafted dreams that filled in the murky blanks between cutting-edge scientific theories with the writer's imagination, and the fact that they were ultimately proven to be wild fantasies didn't blunt their appeal. In Other Waters continues that tradition, now in a fictional world far away from here, somewhere in a massive galactic empire that has just given it a simple cataloging label, Gleese 667CC. And instead of dreaming of silicon-based life or great rivers on Mars, In Other Waters dreams of a distant ocean world inhabited by intelligent underwater fungi. Creatures that can modify the genetic makeup of spores they release to convey messages, domesticate other animals like pets they let live amongst their colonies, and rub chitinous plates together to hum quietly in the shallow waters. And you're going to have to share science fiction's love for these unlikely, if perhaps for the moment plausible, dreams if you're going to get anything out of it. Both gameplay and narrative alike are relatively simple and straightforward, though the latter does pick up in its last few hours. There were in fact a lot of moments when I was just plain bored playing in other waters. But then there's that spark, that incredibly specific lineage of science fiction that you almost never see these days and is almost impossible to find in the space of video games. And there is something a little special in that. I don't know, that or I'm just a sucker for games where I get to play a loyal AI helper for a plucky scientist lady. That helps too. But alright, what's actually going on here? In Other Waters opens up with someone uploading secret information into your AI memory, then installs you into a diving suit. And then the next time you get activated, it's by a xenobiologist named Ellery Vaz. Ellery's on the trail of another biologist, one who's gone missing and has a dark, mysterious past with her. For some reason, you're the only one able to control the suit, so you become Ellery's partner in crime as she begins looking for her friend, and you start trying to solve the game's twin mysteries. What exactly are you, and what was Ellery's friend doing here? And then the first thing you do is stumble upon the first recorded alien life in existence. In Other Waters can be broken down into two sections. In one, you go out and navigate the ocean floor. You fire off your radar, it shows you a bunch of places you can move to, and you pick one. Sometimes that place might let you pick up a sample or elicit some commentary from Ellery, but usually at this point the core loop already repeats and you're back to scanning again. There are some light, and I emphasize extremely light, dangers to be wary of out in the ocean. Certain hazards can drain your oxygen tank, and every move you make consumes power. Run out of either, and you'll be in trouble. But these limitations are generous and then some, and if you do have an emergency, you can refill your meters with those samples you've been picking up. The bigger challenge will be navigation. As far as I can tell, the only time you can see a full world map is when you're deciding where you want to dive. So you have to memorize the general direction of the objectives you want to reach on any given excursion. But even this won't be too much of an issue, however, because navigation is extremely linear. You pretty much just need to decide whether you're going east or west, then follow the breadcrumb trail of nodes in your chosen path, and you'll find anything of interest. To be entirely honest, there wasn't a ton here that grabbed me. 
All of it is executed perfectly fine, but there's just not much to do. The interface is complex enough to feel mildly burdensome and clunky, but not inscrutable enough to make figuring out how to interact with it engaging in and of itself. And keeping Ellery alive is so simple, and has so many safeties to fall back on if you do somehow screw it up, that the survival element to the game likewise barely even needs to be engaged with. All in all, the gameplay just isn't what to come to this one for. But after you've finished all that, you head back to the lab, get those samples you picked up analyzed, then settle in to read. A lot. Every sample you bring back tells you a little bit about the ecosystem you're exploring. They're technically optional, but also they're the primary thing to play this game for, because this is where you find that spark I mentioned. Technically, you're hunting for Ellery's friend, but the real adventure is the scientific discoveries you make along the way. In Other Waters seems far more interested in talking about the ecosystems of the planet you're exploring. Almost the only thing you can do during downtime is read entries about these ecosystems, and time in the field is largely spent looking at new organisms and listening to Ellery's observations and theories about them. Which, speaking of, let's talk about how you look in this game. As an AI, you don't have eyes, and instead interpret everything through radar in this system of icons. It's a very stylish interface that leaves a lot to the imagination, but then other times it creates wonderfully atmospheric moments like this. If you get enough samples, you can eventually look at sketches of all the marine life you're finding, but this is largely a text-based adventure, and the sheer volume of things being described can quickly become an information overload. I pretty quickly stopped reading the description of every rock and outcropping because it's just more information that can be absorbed, but most of the truly critical information comes from Ellery herself, and that is much more manageable. However, those musings also leave me somewhat wanting for a bit of voice acting. I want to be entirely clear that I don't hold it against the game for not having any. There are any number of reasons it might not have been feasible to do so. But the way In Other Waters is set up almost begs for a voice actor in a way almost no other game I've ever covered has struck me. So this is a game with really low-level simple gameplay. You can practically play this in your sleep at so relaxed. And while you're doing your thing, Ellery will periodically chime in. You can still technically keep working as she talks, but without voice acting you still kind of have to stop what you're doing to read whatever she says. Neither activity is quite enough to fully occupy you alone, but I could easily see a game where you got to do both simultaneously, dealing with some chill and relaxing navigational challenges while also listening to Ellery's running commentary, and it does feel like a bit of a missed opportunity. But with that said, we have to ask the big question. What do you get out of five hours within other waters? That's been enough to take me solidly into the third act, but there's a bit more side questing for samples that I'd like to do before I polish this one off. If you just plow through the game's main narrative while ignoring side objectives, you could probably easily knock this game out in under five hours, but the side content is easily the best part of this game, so I'd recommend that you meander a while beneath the waves, as I have, and take the extra few hours to reach the credits. At face value, In Other Waters is a pretty straightforward yet very niche-feeling title. Everything it sets out to do is executed with perfect competency, but there's just not a ton that it does. If you're just looking for a riveting narrative or engaging mechanics, you won't find either here. But there's still that spark! And if that spark catches your imagination, you won't find many games that speak to you quite like this one does. So if the potential of that spark speaks to you, it's still worth a dime. If you guys didn't already know, I just launched a Patreon, and with your generous support, I can start doing all kinds of cool stuff like more in-depth video essays and five-hour streams where I review games like this in real time. So if any of that sounds cool, please consider becoming a patron today. But I hope you enjoyed this first five review. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.